So here is the Calvin Benton Bassam cycle. Those are the three uh, Calvin and his two colleagues uh, that worked this out. They won the Nobel Prize. For this work. And so here we show the enzyme Rubisco taking ribulose bisphosphate and CO2 as substrates, forming 3 phosphoglycerate. That is phosphorylated to form this 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate, and 1 3 bisphosphoglycerate is reduced to form glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is also formed during glycolysis from fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So it's the first compound that's formed immediately after splitting glucose into two. And this is actually a very high energy compound. So glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is high energy. It can spontaneously, two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate can spontaneously, meaning it's downhill in terms of free energy, to form a molecule of glucose 6-phosphate. What this figure also shows you then is how uh, it, the back end of the cycle. And to understand the back end of the cycle, we have to understand then how we can actually liberate or generate a molecule of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate that then can leave the cycle into and do other things in the cell. So in a chloroplast or in a cyanobacterial cell, you can think of lots of molecules of rubisco that have many, many copies of rubisco, and they're all busily fixing carbon dioxide as fast as they can. And so if we just consider three parallel reactions, there's three molecules of RISCO, each of which fixes a CO2, so three carbon dioxides combined with three RUBPs. And as a result, they're going to form six molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. These six molecules will then form six molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Let's say one of these glyceraldehyde 3-phosphates leaves, leaves the cycle, and we are then left with, in the chloroplast, five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So these five molecules of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate have 15 carbons. Five three-carbon sugars give you 15 carbons total. What then happens is a complex series of rearrangements okay, where you get three molecules of ribulose phosphate. So three five carbon sugars with one phosphate each. These are then each phosphorylated using a phosphate from ATP to regenerate three molecules of RUBP. All right, so you don't really have to remember all of this. The point then is for you to understand that if you have enough carbon dioxide being fixed, then some of these intermediates in the Calvin-Benson cycle can leave um, and still leave enough intermediates that can rearrange themselves and complete the cycle.